Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while, so sorry for the absence. I was able to go on the road and do some shows. I was also able to pick up some new equipment because of that. So today we're talking about the new A10 Mini Extreme ISO. So we already got it unboxed right here because I hate unboxing videos. I think they're dumb. So we have it sitting right here in front of us. Um, I'm recording the, the multi-view as you can tell just so we can share information. Um, and what I, instead of just going through it, because I've kind of already did that video when it first got announced, you know, the, the blurry thing that I put on the internet that I'm ashamed of. But I still put it on the internet and you guys watched it, so yay. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about the super source and how we can use it, how we can best use it, especially when we want multiple looks. And that leads us to macros. So super source, if you're not familiar with uh, the Blackmagic super source, there are these four presets that they've already built for you. So you have basically a four box look, a more fun four box look with two different sizings going on, an overlapping two box look, and then a crop with um, two more inputs. The biggest thing with super source is there's, especially on this, there's only one super source. So if that super source is live, you cannot build a new one in preview to switch to. What you can do is you can build macros with all the different looks that you want. Now, if you've never worked with a macro, macro on Black Magic, they basically record every keystroke or every um, input chain or every change, every button press that you tell it to. And for an extended amount of time, you basically you start um, recording macros and you go through it. Now, if you don't record a keystroke, it's not in there. If you forget to do one, it's not in there. So you have to like start the whole thing over. And also if you're building a lot of these back to back to back, like for a super source, it can get really frustrating because let's say these are the three I want, but I want them in a different variety of windows. Well, I have to basically reset everything back to input is black and then go back in and rebuild my look at, as I want it to be in the final version. So what we're going to do is I'm going to build a look. So remember this video where I talked about OBS and I built a show with the original pro. Um, one of the main things was one output that hit the screen was going to be the PowerPoint full screen. And then I would build a pip inside um, OBS to record or stream. We're going to do the same thing, only we don't need to use OBS this time. The extreme is going to take care of all of that for us. So what we're going to do is I'm going to build on the program a super source and then using my AUGS1, I'm going to select that input basically as an auxiliary and send it to a, uh, a, a what's the word I'm looking for? A, a projector. So in room will just be like the auxiliary one and then what I'm building for my record slash my stream will be my program out. Got it? All right. So the first macro I'm going to build is going to be a macro that clears everything. So if you've never done a macro before, you go to the software. So let's pull up the software. There we go. I don't know why I used an auto on that instead of a cut, but I did. We're moving on. So go to the tab that says macros, click on it. It brings up this page. If you have macros saved, they'll all be in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight down here. I'm going to click add. I'm going to call this clear. So we are now recording. You know we're recording because this box right here. And all I'm going to do is select box one. And then input is black. Box two. Input is black. Box three. Input is black. Box four. Is, yeah, box four. Input is black, and then I'm going to select this layout because I'm not actually going to be using that layout. And now I'm going to hit the stop. 
but I've got a stream deck down here and I've basically made a whole page of nothing but macros. So once I save that as clear, I now have a button for clear. What I want to have done here is, I want to highlight here. We're going to create a new one. We're going to call it PC1 16x9. 16x9. And we're going to record. What I want to do is first select box one. Actually, I'm going to start with this preset. I also want to bring this to preview so I can see what I'm building. Box one. Box one is going to be my main camera, which is my podium shot. And now I want to tweak this. So negative six. Uh, move, move, move. I'm also going to crop this down. I've done this a couple times. So I already know I want to take about seven or eight units. I have no idea what these units are, um, but that's what I want to take. Actually, yeah, let's bump that up to eight. I don't think it's percentage. I'm sure there's some measurement listed somewhere, but I don't know what it is. All right, so um, what is labeled my outboard screens, which is really my, my first computer because I did not reset these from the last time. There's no cropping that has to happen because it's the 16 by nine. So six, I want to get that point three off there. Four, and then I want to make this bigger. Again, I've actually done this a couple of times, so I kind of know the sizes I want. I'm gonna drop that down. And we're going to bounce. Let's, you know what, let's make that 4.5. 4.5. .5. That looks good. I could even go back to box one and bring. So that's all of that. That's the look. I then want to send SuperSource to program. And I lastly want to send outboard screens to output. And now I want to stop recording. Clear that. Let's put this back in here and now I want to run macro one alright so I'm going to press this button I'm gonna, I'm gonna press this button right here and I have a macro yay macros now we just have to do that as many times as we need to so in this instance I'm gonna do three more I'm gonna do a second PC in 69 then I'm going to do a PC1 and a PC2 in a 4x3 crop. Mainly because that's what I normally deal with in most of the shows I'm on. So, we're going to fast forward through this, and then we'll come back on the other end. I'm going to pretend like I didn't just do that. So, we're going to make, we're going to make the second one um, this time. I totally didn't just make a second one and then realize I didn't write, I didn't write numbers down, so things that match. So we're going to pretend like that didn't just happen and we're going to build the second one again and then I'm going to jump ahead and build the third and the fourth. So now we're going to fast forward. I forgot to hit program. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate how, how annoying this is because I forgot to end the last macro the second time I made that macro by hitting super source to program so we're going to do it one more time this will be the third time I've made this yay um, this is why macros are annoying to me because I could have already made six or ten looks at least at, that at least are basically the same in an analog way by now. I mean, it's, you make one, you drag, you make one, you save it, you drag different inputs in that are, as long as you're using the same layout, you, you resave it as something new. Here you have to start the entire process over from scratch. And it's, it's just so annoying. So we're going to do this one more time. Hopefully that explains to you kind of how this, how this works. And then We'll talk about options um, afterwards because I'm I'm kind of getting frustrated. Um, so one more time with feeling and concentration, let's make the same macro over again. 
Tours. All right, so I've got two macro buttons. PowerPoint 1, PowerPoint 2, and I can bounce back and forth pretty easy. If I were to do this one again, obviously it's 4 by 3 Let's just make it, go ahead. You would just crop it, basically. Um, I don't really want to go through all that. And again, it's kind of like a hunt and peck. Oh, that's not bad. Look, apparently it's four, whatever four units are. And you would do the whole, whole the same thing over again, just doing with, with, with the four input. As I did not say that in a macro, once I recall that macro, it's not there anymore. It's up to you. There's there's more than one way to do this. I just know macros are kind of annoying. Once you do get them down, they're kind of nice. And the fact that they put buttons on the front of this for macros, I think is great. I love that. I don't know why they stopped at six. Uh, so all of these buttons here, all of these buttons here in the middle, I don't I don't need. Don't even give, like these buttons. I kind of talked about it in the last. Uh, video I did about this I the buttons for the the DVE windows I understand I don't do a lot of keying with these machines I don't want to do a lot of keying in general I know this is made for streamers and streamers do a lot of keying so I, don't, I wish I could reprogram all of like the bottom row of these buttons um, but then again I've got, I've got this thing, so I don't really need to need to. I mean, all right. So I hope that gave you a brief intro to uh, SuperSource and macros. I find them kind of annoying because you forget a step, and I'm very forgetful. Uh, you have to do them over again. As you saw, it took me three tries to do one macro after doing the first one perfectly the first time. So. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope this video was informative and gave you an idea on some of the options or, that you have to do with super sources. Again, you don't have to use the four presets they gave you. You can just go off and do and create and build whatever you want. I just recommend using macros to build it. Also, a piece of paper with notes doesn't hurt either. So you have to, so if you forget to do a step on your macro, you can go back and rebuild it. So. Um, and as always, I've been Redbeard, and this is what I do. I drink and I curse a lot. I hate macros. Can Analog make, way, can Analog Way make one of these? That'd be great. Of course, if Analog Way makes it, it's not going to be $1,000. Can Bargo make one of these? They don't, they don't $7,000. Alright, bye everybody.